Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to paint fur in acrylics and for this I'm going to take a section of a red squirrel painting that I did a few months ago. Now let's jump straight into it. So for my paintings when I'm working with any kind of fur texture I always put a lot of focus on the base layer stage. Now although this base layer can be changed very easily at any point, what I am going to be doing is mapping in my main lights and darks. The other thing that I pay close attention to is the way that I am moving the brush to still follow that fur direction. Now the reason why I do this is because I feel like it builds up a bit more of that muscle memory so that when we come to paint our details on top with our future layers, we have already got used to studying that reference photo, looking at the fur direction and moving the brush accordingly. The layers that I use for my acrylic paintings is something that I talk about in every single tutorial, both on YouTube and on Patreon. Now I do have this Red Squirrel tutorial available on Patreon now, the reference photo liner and material list are provided with that and it is all in real time. There are no parts sped up or cut out, so it's a perfect one to follow along to. If this is of interest or any of my other tutorials for Patreon, then I will link that in the description below. So when I come to building up my layers, as I say this is something that I talk about in all of my tutorials. I want to make sure that I've got as much depth in my base foundation as I can before I jump into my details. I do feel that this is the best way of achieving more of that three dimensional look in fur. Now this is going to depend on the fur texture because how I paint something like a border terrier with the wiry coarse fur is going to be different to something that is very soft like a long haired German Shepherd for example. Those techniques are going to be different. However, I always make sure that I've got a good base foundation in place and even at this stage, this is all that I am focusing on. Now I have a video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for painting realistic fur in acrylics. I will link that in the description below if it's of interest. Now one of the things that I talk about there is fur length, fur thickness and fur direction. Those three things play a huge part in any of my brush techniques. Now that depends on the brush that I am using, but ultimately, the more pressure you apply to any brush, the thicker your line is going to be. I'm always paying attention to how much it needs to be curved, the direction that I need to be moving that brush in to follow that fur structure. Now fur direction is never random. It follows the underlying bone and muscular structure. So if we get that wrong, we will adjust the shape of the animal and then the finished painting will not look as much like that animal as it should. Now all wildlife subjects are going to range to a degree. One red squirrel is not going to be the same to the next. However, when we start working with pet portraits, if we don't get the structure of that person's pet right, that owner will know. So the fur direction with anything that we are painting is so important. Of course, when we're trying to capture this level of photorealism as I am here, these things really do matter. And this section of the red squirrel is a prime example. Look at how it slopes down from just below the armpit, it then curves down towards the lower edge of the canvas and then goes across to the left hand side. But as it gets lower down the section where I'm working now, it starts to continue again a different curve back down to the lower edge of that surface. Now this here, all of these changes in direction are so important. This red squirrel has that back leg perched up on the bit of bark that's in front. You can see that from the finished painting in the corner. So this fur direction is telling the viewer, whoever looks at this painting, exactly what that leg is doing. So I put so much focus on the fur direction, it is really the main forefront of all of my thoughts. Any layer that I'm working on, no matter what it is, I'm always thinking of that fur direction and why is it travelling in that way. So I talk about the benefits of using glazes to adjust colour when working with acrylics because it really does take out all of the stress about worrying about which colours we should be mixing throughout the layering process. I'm using a glaze here to adjust the colour of the details, that initial layer of texture that I've painted in and here you can see it's already now looking much more of a typical red squirrel colour. I haven't had to worry about the colour of the paint while I'm mixing for my details. I haven't really had to do that at all. I know that I can adjust all of the colour with a glaze at any point. Now the amount of glazes that I use will vary from 
reference photo to reference photo. It is going to vary depending on the fur texture, but you really can't ever do too many. If you add details and you don't feel that the colour is right, a simple glaze on top can change that in a matter of seconds. So we really don't have to stress or worry about colour mixing at all. This is why I like using Liquitex Basics because this paint is naturally a little bit more transparent and it works really well for these glazing techniques. So before I start really focusing on those top layers of detail, if the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video so far have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. I'd be very, very grateful. I also upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of that content, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. Now, if you've seen many of my other tutorials here on YouTube, you'll know that I don't actually turn my paintings round too much. I try to keep the painting square onto my camera. But there are some instances where the fur direction is curving over in such a way that I do have to turn my painting round. Now this can be really beneficial in order to get a better angle on the brush and helps us to create more of those realistic brush strokes. And with anything that I am painting, I will typically work from dark to light. So I wanna be saving my brightest highlights for my last layers. These highlights are typically the fur that is sat on the very top. So if we paint them in too soon, we're gonna significantly reduce the amount of depth that we can create within that fur. Now for this specific tutorial, I haven't focused on the white fur at all, but I do wanna quickly mention why I've added it in on this last bit of this video. So the white fur overlaps the ginger section on the left. So I have to make sure that I painted in that first and then I add my white details over the top so I make it look like this fur is in front. This ordering process of the layers is really important. This is gonna to help to build up more of that three-dimensional feel of the painting. So any areas where you do see that fur is overlapping something else, that has to be saved until the last section. Make sure you get whatever is behind that fur painted in first and finished, so that now when I come to add those tiny final details, it all makes sense. This has now immediately pushed that back leg back slightly and brought the body and the chest forward all because I've made sure I've layered the details correctly. So I really do hope this tutorial has been useful. As I say, if you would like to paint along to this version with the entire real-time step-by-step tutorial with that in-depth voiceover, then I will link my Patreon in the description below. I also have a library on my website, which I'll also pop a link to below, and that lists every single tutorial that I've got on Patreon, so you can see what type of stuff is there before you sign up. Now the wonderful thing about Patreon is it's really flexible, so you can stay for as long as you want or you can cancel at any time. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I would just also like to say a huge thank you to all of your support here on YouTube. I really am so grateful. All of the likes, the comments, the such kind feedback that I get, I really do appreciate it. And I have so many tutorials planned for 2023, but I am now taking suggestions for animals that you would like to see featured in tutorials. So put, feel free to pop any in the comments below. I would love to hear what you would like to see in some of these tutorials. It could be pastels, acrylics or graphite. Just make sure to let me know which medium you would like to see them featured in. This will be my last acrylic tutorial that I upload here to YouTube for 2022. So I really do hope that you have a wonderful new year and I will see you back in January.